want a small amount, not a huge amount of water because we want to keep this as dark as possible. And you want some coffee. Now, if you look at the directions that are on the back of these, like Starbucks here, you don't have to use Starbucks. You could use like some regular old swill or something. It says use cold filtered water. Yeah, I don't care about that. Two tablespoons of water for six fluid ounces. That will melt your eyeballs. In any case, we want it to be strong. So we've got our six fluid ounces of water. We're going to add that to the back. And we want and then two tablespoons. Those are the big ones. They look like this. They aren't those little things. Each machine differs a little bit, but if you don't have it set right, the grounds float to the top and they get all in the coffee, which in this case isn't that bad because we want a strong coffee. But if you were drinking it and you had the grounds floating around, you'd get those under teeth and you just look nasty. Now we're going to brew that bad boy. Now, a little bit of information trivia on coffee which is what we're using for our monochromatic painting here. Coffee, I read somewhere, or was told by someone, I don't remember, but I have it in my head that more wars have been fought over coffee than any other substance. Is that right? It just doesn't even make sense. Here I am forming young minds and just throwing this information out on the internet. And so it must be true, because I just said it on the internet. But in any case, that more wars have been fought over coffee than any other substance. More than over opium, or cocaine, or oil, or Pokemon cards. I don't know if that's true. But we aren't going to be sexist. Which means we're going to value misinformation as much as Mr. Information. And we are going to go with my gut feeling that more wars have been fought over coffee than any other substance, which I don't really believe, but I'm telling you anyway. All right, so we're gonna wait until this is done, and then we are going to jump into our painting. All right, our coffee is done brewing, and hopefully you didn't put too much in there, because like I said, you don't actually use too much of the coffee. I swear, if you cut me open, I'd probably bleed this stuff. I drink so much of it. In any case, you're going to be using, if you have a K-cup, you're just cracking the top of that and putting it in a little bowl. Uh, if you have the filter, you just want to take the filter right out of here and you put it in a bowl just like so. And then we're going to add a little bit, not a whole lot, of our actual coffee from the carafe. So that's sort of sludgy and like mud in there. And then you just go with dipping your brush right in. Now, you want to resist the urge to draw out your form first. We're going to be freehanding it with our coffee paint. And you're going to start by just putting nearish the top your branch. Now, the key to doing a coffee stain painting is layering. You're going to have to go over it several times because even if you have the super darkest coffee, it's going to take a few times of going over it for it to really show up. So a couple passes is going to give you something that looks like that. Still pretty light. At the end, when it's dry, we can brush off those little greeny marks that are the coffee grounds that are on there. 